Hello and welcome to the Sunday Sports Show here on Dublin Community Television. We're coming at you live on this bank holiday weekend from our studios in Temple Bar. I'm Breffney Early. And I'm Claire Kew. As ever, we'll be covering every blade of grass in Irish sport from the international sporting heroes off the Irish football scene to our local heroes at the Meteors Basketball Club in the most comprehensive roundup seen anywhere on Irish TV. Now we know Ireland always shoot pretty well above their average in terms of the world stage but one sport we haven't quite managed to crack just yet is tennis. Now we have had players in the open draws at Wimbledon, the Australian Open and the US Open over the last few years but one person who's looking to make that breakthrough over the next few weeks, months and years is tennis doubles expert James Kluski. I caught up with him recently and here's what he had to tell us. I started when I was about seven years old. My mom actually played a little bit of tennis in school years and years ago. Um, and I have a brother and sister, they played a little bit. I was the youngest in the family. Um, so I started playing swords and then you know, I, I obviously enjoyed the sport, got more and more into it. Um, then I, you know, I played the tournaments under 10, did relatively well, got selected for Leinster squads. Um, and then gradually I just obviously got more and more into the sport and then um, when I was 14, uh, there was a Canadian coach who came, he lived in, in Dublin, he worked in and Westwood Clontarf opened and there was seven indoor courts there so that was a big, that was a big uh, help for us. It's tough to play tennis outside and it, to, to train indoors on a really good surface there and I had a great gym and great facilities and a great coach so he, he created a program, uh, an environment that we were able to train, train in and uh, it kind of grew from there so I played there and it got more serious then. I was, we, we practiced before and after school and six days a week and, um, and then that led on to when I was 18 I went to college in America for four years of sports scholarship as a lot of the tennis guys do. Um, so I spent four years there in Louisiana. In tennis in general in, in the world you have a lot of like, there's a lot of, um, oh in sport in general I suppose there's a lot of pushy parents, you know, parents who are really into, you know, like especially in tennis you have you can have a pushy father, a pushy mother or something, but in my, in my case I didn't have that at all. Um, my dad is not really into tennis uh, at all, <laughs> like he's into, you know, he watches Gaelic or horse racing and stuff like that, so uh, my mom does have a little, I mean she, she played a little bit in school but nothing serious or anything and, and she, she watches tennis on TV but she, you know, they wouldn't have come to many of my matches and stuff like that, it was more kind of my drive but they were, they were there to support me and they helped me along the way. I think for every for every Judy Murray and and for every parent that's helped, I think there's hundreds that have been, you know, a big hindrance. You know, I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of players around the world where they're you know they have very pushy parents and it just doesn't it doesn't work. That the people they don't enjoy the sport and um, so I wouldn't really agree, I agree with that. But like yeah, Judy Murray has been instrumental in Andy's career and my mom has been instrumental in my career, but just in a different kind of way, not in a in a pushy way. She's all, you know. If I lose in in a foreign country, and you know the first person who says to me, you know, there's always next week or whatever it is, she always kind of pushes me on. So it's kind of a different way of looking at it. Coaching when I come home, I um, you know, I've worked in, in DCU, I work a little bit with Gary when I'm home, but I try and be away as much as I can, obviously to play as much as I can as well. But when I'm home, um, yeah, Gary is in DCU there. I go and practice in DCU. I go practice in in Fitzwilliam, and I have people help me like psychologist Kevin Clancy from Cork um, so he's helped me a lot and then I'm, today we're in the ISI in Artane uh, John Connor here is actually John goes back, uh, me and John go back a long time because he he worked with um, with James McGee as well, myself and James McGee um, Larry had had John in as the, as the physical trainer so we so that's he knows me since I was 15, 16 and uh, so uh, he's helped me a lot and every time I'm home, like we do a lot of, I would say a lot of prehab stuff as well because for tennis and I'm on the road a lot that I need to try and keep, I need to play as many weeks as I can and, and since I've been working with John at Touchwood I've had no injuries and he's, he's had me in good nick. I think things have improved um, and to give Tennis Ireland some credit in, in, in that when I was when I was leaving Ireland when I was 17 or 18, I went to college in America, and I felt like I, that was the only the only chance I had was to go to America to keep playing tennis. Now you have they ha players do have an opportunity if they wanted to stay and maybe go to college in Ireland to DCU or you know, and then the tennis arm they have the facility there in DCU with the the BMP 
Paribas Academy there. So that is a help. So that, that has helped and things have improved. But um, I mean, with the climate, and, you know, we need more indoor courts. I mean, that's, you know, I, I've, I've often said that if Westwood didn't open, I, I don't think I'd, I probably wouldn't be the level I am right now. And I'm sure McGee would agree as well. Because that, that, you know, seven indoor courts and a really good gym gave us an opportunity to practice. Whereas, you know, when I come home now, and obviously the weather is disadvantage and in tennis the surface is a big thing and if you look at synthetic grass no one really plays on it around the world so um, in England they, they play on it a little bit but Ireland is really the only country that plays on it um, and it's you're not going to develop a tennis player on the on that surface you know I mean you can get you can get good but you need the you need a slow hard court as well or a clay court or whatever it is and Westwood gave that opportunity and now DCU has some you know, has those indoor courts and you have Riverview and a couple of others, but we need more of them. Um, so that would be a big thing for me was if you, if you look at somewhere like France and how many, you can go to a small town and there's two indoor courts there. Every town it seems like there's indoor courts. And, you know, I, I know it com comes down to money as well and it's not easy, but I think for tennis to, to take another step in Ireland, we need more indoor courts and we need more people playing the game. With the psychologist, he always, we always talked about setting goals, and I'd be very goal-driven. So, I mean, I like to be in the top 150, at least. So, um, and now, you know, I need to be in the challengers, and I need to be, doing, you know, in the, in the business end of the challengers. And I made a couple of semis last year in Kazakhstan, Athens, um, and, a couple, and, you know, I've won a couple of rounds in different, different or Turkey, I made semis as well. Um, so this year and this summer, is the goal is to try and win one, you know, make a couple of finals because it's obviously the points is big, so um, that's really the goal. And that was Irish Davis Cup star James Kluski talking to us about his professional tennis career. He's ranked just outside the top 200 in the world. I think he's a name you're going to see an awful lot more of over the coming years, particularly when it comes to the doubles events on the tour. Now, we're going to turn our attention to something a little bit more recent, and today's action in the Aviva, where the FAI Junior Cup Final and an international game against Georgia took place. I'm delighted to say uh, Dave Hooper is joining me to talk about the game. Dave, you were at the games? I was. I was at both games. Uh, the first game seemed to be a bit of a cracker, even though it was a scoreless draw. It uh, went to penalties, but it seemed to be have everything in it. Missed Absolutely penalties, everything. sendings off. Absolutely everything. Super goalkeeping from Lee Murphy. Fantastic goalkeeper for Sheriff YC. He's really been player of the season for them, in my opinion, and I think it's going, not going to be too long until that guy's playing extra City League football. Okay, it is the, F, or the FAI Junior Cup Final. Kilbarrick United, Sheriff YC, two Dublin reasonably local rivals, uh, and they've known each other pretty well at this level. They've played a couple of times at that stage. They have indeed. Just last week, Leinster, the Leinster Junior Cup final, uh, Sheriff, excuse me, got the best of that one as well, winning two one in that game. And it's it's a credit to the AUL as well that Sheriff and Kilbarrick. And again, remember last season, Sheriff had to have the voodoo on them maybe by winning last season's uh, cup final in Talca Park as well. Talk us through the game today. So. Uh Sheriff had a man sent Kilbarrick off. were the better team in all fairness throughout the first half. I suppose it was really Darren Gibson's uh, effort on the uh, about 35 minutes. Uh, it was a good. It was a cross from Keith Dunn, who would, or from Paul Murphy, excuse me, punched out uh, by Lee Murphy, the sheriff goalkeeper, and Gibbons came onto the ball, smashed it, and it was a fantastic save by Lee Murphy. That was the best for uh, for Kilbarrick in the first half, but they had most of the play. Go into the last five minutes of that second of the sec of the first half. Excuse me. Um, good keeping by Mark Hatton kept Kilbarrick in the game. Then uh, John Rocket an effort cleared off the line just on the stroke of half time. Come back out for the second half. We're expecting maybe Sheriff will uh, will influence the game a bit more. And there's uh, their full back uh, John O'Brien was sent off for red for red card for a professional foul. Five minutes later to give away a penalty. Up steps uh, John Malidi, the captain of Kilbarrick United and star player. Puts it wide, well wide of the goal. And that was really it. Kilbarrick really ran out of ideas. Sheriff didn't press either, but down to 10 men, they're going to be against the run of play. Ended up going to uh, extra time. You have to remember, FAO Junior Cup is decided on the day for the entire competition. Yep, absolutely. Goes to extra time again. There's a bit of action, but nothing clear cut. So we go all the way to penalties, and John Malidi steps up, misses his first penalty. Kilbarrick basically costs Kilbarrick so the cup. Every, every goes penalty in goes that. in after that. And Sheriff win by five goals to four in penalty kicks. Very unfortunate for, for John Malady in that situation to, to find himself 
both in, in the, the actual game and... Yeah, miss missing, missing two penalties out of 11 that were taken on the day, you know, that's, that's hard luck. But it was Sheriff's Cup, Sheriff's Day to go on to play now in the Tom Han Cup, which will be against Avondale United as the, the pre-season opener and in the, uh, the Avondale, of course, the Intermediate Cup champions and, and double, double or back-to-back -back winners even. Previous one that was done, 2004 Fairview Rangers from Limerick. So not many, not many clubs have won Junior Cup, never mind win back to back. Yeah, both those teams obviously also in part of the FAI Senior Cup, which started this weekend. Their games obviously put back till next week and August. Interesting enough. Yeah, um, I think the, the reason for that game being put back to August is the, just the way the season falls. You have to remember that it's end of season for the junior clubs. Uh, AUL is uh, just coming to kind of an end, and Kilbarrick and Sheriff are, are in the are in the mix for that one. Um, so that that I think is the reason why it gets pushed back. In in reality, if I can just voice again my opinion, I think that June the FAI Senior Cup should be moved back to its traditional dates, and maybe this weekend should be the weekend where we're getting the FAI Cup final. Um, just from at the start of the season, at the start of the season, just from covering the the, the FAI Senior Cup during the week, the interest is, is just not there anymore. In the, well, when in you the play the first round or well, second round, the second round games this early in the season and don't play another game in the competition in anger for two or three months, it does kind of drag it out a bit. Anyway, there was other events going on in the Aviva today. Small matter of an international game between Ireland and Georgia. Yeah, a bit of a damn squid, in all fairness, until uh, the Georgia goalkeeper was sent off after 10 minutes for professional foul again on Shane Long. Bit unlucky because the ball was going away from goal. Long had had a couple of chances throughout the game. First half, Ireland burnt great. Uh, Richard Kyo eventually heads it home. A good header from a, from a James McLean free kick. Came out second half. Ireland brought Robbie Keane on, made a big difference, brought the performance up a lot. Simon Cox makes it 2-0 and then Keane adds another two goals in. Wes Houlihan, who Trapatoni said would probably start on Wednesday night, didn't, or Friday night even, against the Faroe Islands. Didn't think he had a great game in the first half. Came into it a bit more in the second half and maybe influenced Trapatoni to play him on, on Friday night against the Faroes. Long, obviously, captain for the, for the day today. How do you do in that role? Yeah, he did very well. It's interesting as well, particularly after last, uh, last August game against Serbia when he had a run-in with Trapatoni and uh, Trapatoni said it was idiotic what he, uh, what he said when he, he'd counted Trapatoni before the game and said, I, I don't think I'm able to play because of a hamstring injury and talking to uh, the written press after the game, he said there's nothing wrong with hamstring, which was very strange. Yeah. Before we sum up, I do want to ask you about yesterday. The National Schools Athletics Championships took place yeah, in Tullamore. Yeah, the Ireland Schools. Uh, yeah. Some big, I suppose, results. Na National Junior Record's gone. National Junior Record went into 200 metres when uh, Marcus Lawler, this guy, is, is something else. Not only did he break the 200 metre National Junior Record, he broke a 43-year-old 100 metres record as well uh, in, at schools level. And this guy is a real potential. I think in Rieti in the European Junior Championships in, in July, we're, we've got a, a potential gold medalist for Ireland in that event. Shifa Kegna Butner as well, another athlete two minutes three for the 800 meters at 17 uh, at 17 years of age I think Sonia O'Sullivan's record is under severe threat uh, well obviously it's, it's going to go sometime it's just a matter of who takes it I think at this stage Th Dave thanks very much for joining us thanks, pleasure Matthew. to have you on the show I'm sure we won't be too long before you see you on here again um, <clears throat> but we are going to move on to something a little bit different and last week we introduced a or actually the week before last we introduced a segment called short corners where we basically go into a club corner a couple of people and ask them to dish the dirt on their teammates. This week we took a visit to Meteors Basketball Club and we spoke to three of the senior girls in that team. I think we're a pretty stylish team. Jay, Jay, maybe. Maybe you. Actually, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Just because yeah. you're in gear and yeah. I'm not. Yeah. 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 You just saw for work. <laughs> just asked because there's a camera here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, actually. Yeah, Elaine yeah. probably. <laughs> she forgot her kit. So. <laughs> I have my boots on. <laughs> Oh gosh, Susie Doyle. Awesome. <laughs> Susie Absolutely. And dance moves yeah. to go with us. Yeah. yeah, they're like disco stew. Yeah, um, yeah. Susie Doyle. Absolutely outrageous. And yeah. sings on the bus. Yeah, sings, like to herself all the time. And even, hasn't even got a tune. Like, yeah, yeah, awful, awful. Has uh, to Susie. be Elaine Caffrey. <laughs> Between Elaine Susie, Caffrey. yeah, I'm awful. Yeah. Like you have to tell her maybe an hour before, like to come if we're going on it's a just, night out. It's just because I work so hard. No. Stop. <laughs> no, it's Elaine Caffrey. Definitely. Yeah, guilty. Eva Brown. <laughs> yeah. 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 Eva Brown. In plank position. We love her, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 She'll admit it herself. Uh, yeah. Eva yeah. does a plank position, lying on the ground, yeah. chilling out. She's not fond of the trains. No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> Fiona, 100%. Oh, yes. yeah. Fiona, keep it legit, Meanie, we call her, because everything is so legit. Yeah. She's like our mum, she looks after us for yeah. everything. She's she's, she's great. mommy Meanie. She, she yeah. is mommy Meanie, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. She's super. Yeah. 
Oh, know. Rebecca always has her playlist. Yeah, she's, she's good. She's good one for the old getting us pumped game up for the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jade's or no, well, Casey is well. Katie. 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 Oh, Katie. Katie. Yeah. yeah. Katie Cabrera. Katie Cabrera. Yeah, she she gives it to her. She's down with all the basketball people. Yeah. She's good like that. Indira. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. controversial yeah. enough. Yeah. You know. Everyone now has their moments, but yeah, no we get pretty. It's very intense. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> if the ref's standing close to you and Elbows makes the call, right. yeah, yeah, makes yeah. the call that you're disagree with. Boys. No, so. I think girls is better to watch. Girls are more generous. The guys to, to show off. The technical games look yeah. better with the girls. You yeah, know? with the girls. <laughs> I'd don't rather, care, don't I, care. I always wish I was a boy. I'd be way better. <laughs> you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah true. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah boys. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca. Rebecca, yeah, yeah she's probably. a solid. Rebecca I mean, really she slogs away, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rebecca. Yeah, probably Rebecca. Yeah. She was actually on it. She was called Jenna's last minute. Yeah. 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 yeah, so yeah. she votes her... Rebecca. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where else me? Of course, of course. Katie has a nice selection now. She's got her pink ones and her meteor ones. Okay, yeah, Katie her... rocks a good boot. Like Katie, Katie, Katie changes yeah, every... yeah, yeah, change yeah. up every training session. Yeah. Keeps it fresh. Long socks, the whole lot. Yeah. yeah. The happiest on the court are just generally happy. I think Karen. You're always yeah, smiling. Yeah, you're happy on the court. <laughs> she's always smiling. I'm smiling on the court. Yeah, yeah. yeah Karen. Karen, Karen me guys. Do you know we should just open three of us for everything? Me. Me. Go me. And that was the girls of the Meteors basketball team courting controversy in short corners there. Oh, Brefni, do you want to throw in any, uh, shoot in any basketball problems? No, will I hoop? I'm so sorry, that was in the script, it's shocking, but what can you do? Fair enough. Well, now it's time to wreck some heads, bash some balls and fling some steel for the ever-popular Tavern Triathlon. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks since we did this. Basically, the Tavern Triathlon is where we get a different sports star to do a different type of triathlon in a pub, hence the Tavern Triathlon. So we asked them to do darts, pool and a pub quiz. Three very traditional pub activities that everyone has done in a pub at some stage. Um, this week's guest is Neve Connolly, who is a player with DLR Waves in the Women's National League in Women's Soccer. Here's how she got on. First time lucky. So within 10, how many swimming clubs in Ireland? Okay, I have no idea. I can only go on based on something like the number of large towns. Um, within 10, and I would go with 
152. 152 is the answer. <laughs> there you go. Which two Irish sports journalists were at the forefront of the journalistic investigation into Lance Armstrong? Um, I don't get this now. Um, Paul Kimmich. Yes. And Dave Walsh. Correct. Question three. Three Irish rugby players have more than 100 caps for Ireland. Who are they? Um, is there only three? There are only three. With more than 100? Yep. Okay. This seems like it should be easy and I'm worried that I'm getting this wrong. Brian O'Driscoll. Correct. Ronan O'Gara. Correct. And John Hayes. Correct. Three out of three in that round. Okay. Question four. Name four of the last five winners of the Tour de France. Oh, this is a this is a trick question. Nope, are no they, trick question. Are they genuine winners? They're or all they genuine winners. Nobody has since? been. Nope. So Lance Armstrong is not allowed. Well, he wouldn't have been in the last five anyway. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But they're all the legitimate it's holders legitimate, of the title. Currently legitimate, anyways. Uh, Bradley Wiggins. <laughs> that's, that's a scandalous. <laughs> it's a scandalous <laughs> allegation. Bradley Wiggins is correct. Um. Contador. Correct. One of the Schleck brother, brothers. Which one? Andy. Correct. One more. Oh, I think I'm out there now. Um, uh, that, that's the last three years, isn't it? So that's no, Bradley won it in 2012, Schleck in 2010. Alberta Contador in 2009. Oh, okay, so 2011. I don't think I'm going to get that, so the feeling is... No, I'm not going to okay, get that. Okay, uh, Australian Cadell Evans. Oh. And Carlos Sastra won it in five years ago. Question five, and the, remember there's five, five questions, or five answers to this question. Name the last five All-Ireland Gaelic football champions. Oh, no. Counties to win the All Ireland. Football. Yeah, not in the last five years, but the last five counties to win. Okay. I really should know this more than I will. Dublin. Correct. <laughs> um, Kerry. Correct. Cork. Correct. Is there anyone strange in there? I don't know. And I should say my home county, but I'm afraid. I'm not sure if they did or not. Um, Donegal. Correct. That's for one final one. Um, In 2008. 2008. That's a long time ago. I'm thinking uh, I'm going to go with Tyrone. Correct. Five out of five in the final round. Congratulations. Okay. And you'll be glad to hear that Neve Connolly has recovered from her ordeal after just a few sessions of therapy. And we'll be back in action for the new season of the Women's National League um, this year. So check out wnl.fai.ie for more information on that one. And next week we'll have another contender up for the Tavern Triathlon. But this week, if you've been distracted by the sunshine and the festi festivals of late, don't worry, Breffney has the roundup of this week's scoreboard. Thank you very much, Claire. We'll take a start with Gaelic Games in the Leinster Senior Football Championship. Dublin had a good win, 122 to 9 points over Westmeath in Crow Park last night, while Kildare ran out winners, 19 points to 112 against Offaly. In Munster, Kerry, 421, Waterford, 1-4, while up north this afternoon, Derry, 115, down 217. Moving on to hurling in the Leinster Senior Hurling Championship, Leash, 218, Carlow, 13 points. That was played in Port Leash this afternoon. While in Munster, Clare had a good victory over Waterford, 220 to 115. While in the Christie Ring Cup semi-final replay, down 23 points, me the 110. Cricket now in the RSA Interprovincial Series, the 50-over version of the game. Leinster Lightning, the new Leinster identity, 272 uh, for six at the end of their 50 overs. Ben Ackland, Kevin O'Brien, and John Anderson, top scorer and for the Leinster side. While the Northwest Warriors. Uh, could only manage 123 all out in the chase. Some international soccer friendlies during the week. England won, Ireland won, while Ireland won 4-0, as we mentioned with Dave Hooper earlier in the show. Richard Kyo, Simon Cox and Robbie Keane with two strikes to, have, to leave us with a 4-0 victory over our opponents today in the Aviva. Before that game, of course, the FAI Junior Cup final was played and Sheriff YC won 5-4 on penalties over Kilbarrack United. In the FAI Cup second round, games played on Friday night. It's Finn Harps 2, Wexford Youths 1, Shelburne 3, Bandon AFC 0, Talker Rovers 2, College Corinthians 2.
Bray Wanderers 2, Murview United 0, Bohemians 0, Drotty United 3, Salt Hill Devon 0, Shamrock Rovers 2, Phoenix FC 0, Dundalk 4. In the games played last night, Saturday, Longford Town 4, Pike Rovers 0, Bluebell United 2, Athlone Town 2, Waterford United 0, Sligo Rovers 2, St. Patrick's Athletic 4, UCD 0, Glenville 0, Limerick 3. Blarney United 0, Derry City 4, St. Pat's CY 3, Cove Ramblers 4. The British and Irish Lions got their tour off to a good start in rugby. They played the Barbarians yesterday morning in Hong Kong and they had a good win with Paul O'Connell getting on the score sheet. 59 points to 8, they won that encounter. Moving on and looking at the pitch and put national match play championships which are taking place this weekend in Lucan Pitch and Putt Club. The men's championship semi-finals take place tomorrow morning. Derek Courtney of St. Bridget's faces Ray Murray of St. Anne's, while Sean Goggin of Cement faces Joe Ronan of McDonough. Some very strange club names in the pitch and putt world. In the women's equivalent, Christy Byrne, who's the defending title holder, she, she's from St. Bridget's, also from Kilcullen in County Kildare, and she plays Geraldine Ward of Port Marnock, while Christy Byrne's teammate, or clubmate, Marion Byrne, faces Sheila Elms. So it's a Port Marnock versus Bridget's double header in the Women's Championship semi-finals tomorrow with the finals to be played tomorrow afternoon. And finally in triathlon, uh, triathai took place yesterday. Two and a half thousand people took to the water, the bike and the run in the Thai. Uh, three distances we have the results for this afternoon. Uh, Olympic in the men's, Rory Sexton was the winner while Deirdre Hoff of Wicklow won the women's event. The double distance, which is a colossal 3k swim, uh, 80k cycle and a 20 kilometer run. Uh, no mean feat by any stretch of imagination. Eric Wolf of Cork Troy was the first man past the finish line, while Tamara Manxitova of Base to Race crossed the line in just over five hours. In the sprint event, Aaron O'Brien of Limerick came in just under the hour mark, while Mary Boland was just a couple of minutes over that precious hour mark. In the ITU World Championship Series in Madrid, Aileen Morrison Reed. Uh, had a 12th place finish in just over two hours. That's obviously an Olympic distance triathlon, and she's currently ranked eighth in the ITU World Series overall. Wow, fantastic. Thanks many for that, Brefni. No problem. But that's it for this week's show, for this week's Sunday Sports Show, but we'll be back next week with another episode. But until then, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and the thesundaysportshow.com. Yep, that is it for the week, and glad you could make it. Uh, we'll be hope you come back to us next week again. See you then.